So sometimes we don't know quite how to talk about a player like Jimmy Butler. He is among the best in the league at some specific things, but not at everything. He has delighted some of the teams he's played on with his charm and work ethic. Just earlier this month, he organized an Easter egg hunt for the entire Sixers organization and their families. However, he has also burned entire organizations to the ground. See Timberwolves, <laughs> comma, Minnesota. And on the court, he can struggle like he did over the weekend in Philly's game one loss to the Raptors. Yet often when things are dire, it is he who is able to just make it all work, just enough, even when it really shouldn't, to dig out a win. That is what happened last night with the Raptors. The Sixers led most of this game, but that lead never really felt secure and certainly wasn't pretty. Philadelphia turned the ball over 13 times in the first half alone. Ended up desperately turning to big man Greg Monroe, of all people, four minutes. They actually had him deliver and then promptly get hurt. Mm. Monroe's services were required in part because Joel Embiid, already dealing himself with knee tendinitis, also yesterday had a stomach bug that the Sixers identified as gastroenteritis. Now, as usual, Joel had a more colorful way of describing it. Man. If you've had whatever the name is, if you had, if you had uh, the before, uh... Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> uh, if you've had it before, you, you would know how it feels, but uh, these are my guys and, you know, want to show up every night, uh, play hard. Jimmy is all of us there, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Joe. Joe. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, Embiid did show up and play hard, but he certainly was in no condition to dominate. And Ben Simmons, while, by the way, doing some very impressive work on Kawhi Leonard defensively, has been muted so far on the offensive end. Coach Brett Brown will call this whole game a fist fight. And damn, if that's not Jimmy Butler's entrance music, <laughs> I don't know what is. Butler would finish the game going 30-10-5, and but his real work came, as usual, in the fourth. He scored 12 minutes in the game's final eight, sorry, 12 points in the final eight minutes, keeping the Sixers afloat despite a gathering storm from Toronto. Check this out, some great perseverance by Embiid under the basket. He finally finds Jimmy with the pass and then swish, knock down three. Butler would also sneak in for some really tough shots. He hit his foul shots and when it was all over, Brown had this to say. This was James Butler. Like, that was the adult in the gym. He was just a tremendous, just a tremendous sort of uh, rock. He, 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 he willed us to a lot of different situations. High praise, although it's funny, James, Jimmy Butler, his name actually isn't short for James. His given name is Jimmy Butler III, although Brett's point still stands. Here's another way of putting it. The analytics website Inpredictable calculates which players add the most win probability to a team in the clutch, which is a fancy way of saying they have figured out which NBA player helps his team win close games the most often. And guess who it is over the past five years, including the playoffs? Nope, not LeBron James. Not Kevin Durant, not Steph. And, and I mean, look, let's not kid ourselves. Steph and KD don't even play a ton of close games, so that's why they're not high up in that category. Still, of everyone in the NBA, the answer is Jimmy Butler. Basically, when things are tight and grinding, the guy who has pulled his team out of the muck the most often <laughs> over the past five years <laughs> is Jimmy Butler. And he did it again last night. And maybe that's the way we should talk about him. It doesn't have to mean he's the best player in the world or the most easygoing. He doesn't have to be everyone's cup of tea. But he is a winner. In particular, he's a winner when it's hard. And the Sixers are happy to roll with that as far as it takes them. So, Paul, what is the best way for the Sixers to utilize Butler in their offense moving forward? Because he's taken a step back at times. And you know that he's sort of had loggerheads with Brett Brown on how mm -hmm. he should be used. Well, they have so much talent that, you know, he can't be the leading scorer every night because, you know, you have Embiid, Simmons, these guys are all more than capable. It's just like with me, Ray, and Kevin. You know, I was our best scorer, but every night I didn't lead us in score. And it felt like down, it. The, <laughs> down the stretch, it was really by committee. Now, Jimmy has to be their go-to guy. In my case, we had Kevin who could finish games, uh, be our clutch closer, mm -hmm. Ray. But in this case, it has to be Jimmy Butler. He's the one guy who can create his own shot off the dribble mm -hmm. or off the move. He can spot up. He can do so many different things that the other guys can't do. So, you know, continue using him like that. You know, he'll have his times where he'll be the leading scorer. He'll have times where he won't. 
But down the stretch, it has to be, you have to use your best players. Jimmy and MB have to be in more action together, pick and rolls, or isolate Jimmy in his, in his favorite, uh, favorite spots. So I, I was with this team in the first round of yeah. playoffs. And Joel looked at me, and you know, he was with Jimmy there. They've got a nice little routine going now, uh, Laurel and Hardy. But he said to me, hey, look, he's our closer. I'm good with that because you know this in tight games, especially in the postseason, it's very hard for big men to dominate yeah. down the stretch because right. you got to get him the ball. So it makes sense that Jimmy Butler is going to do that. But I don't think we should forget that Jimmy Butler can also be the closer for you on the defensive end. 100 mm -hmm. percent. And that's yeah. really where I think, you know, the James Butler part uh, <laughs> comes in. He's trying really hard to fit in there. I really enjoyed him the few days I was around with him. He's gone out of his way to be a positive influence with some of the young guys. I mean, he has a snarl for sure because that's that's what makes him Jimmy Butler, but uh, the positive self-talk has really been embraced. Remember early on, we were wondering if Embiid and Jimmy Butler got along. You, you can put that to rest. Well, I was gonna say, I think there was a little bit, just that sure uncomfortableness, right, of like whose team is it, stuff mm -hmm. like that, who's gonna be the powerful presence in the room. Obviously, when he came in, the way they had to play all of a sudden wasn't how Joel was thrilled with them playing. I always thought Tobias Harris coming in was such a smart move, and I was like, oh, they gave up so much for Tobias. Tobias, it's not just what you're adding with Tobias Harris, but I felt like he was a lubricator for that whole offense and also, frankly, that locker room, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of made everything easier. And you have seen Jimmy and Joel. You're right, Laurel and Hardy up there, yep. that they have been funny. You can see their ease with each other on the right. bench also. Ben Simmons commenting on one of Jimmy's Instagram posts this morning in a really funny way. You can tell yep. that that's legit. It's not just sort of like, oh, we're just faking it because we're teammates. That chemistry is there right now. That's, that, that can help. I mean, the playoffs, that can take you really far. This is yeah. a big win for them. I mean, this is a huge win for the It's for hard the to see them bouncing back if they had lost game two, right? Absolutely. Even though that well, they were going Especially Joel. Off. I mean, Joel's just not himself. Right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely.